very much for the dress. Wonderful woman in the bathing suit. Stop her. Between 1976 and 1979, Linda Carter was all over the news more than usual. With her role as Wonder Woman, she dominated the entertainment industry, going against all odds and shocking patriarchal advocates. Not only was she a trendsetter by ushering in a new era of unconventional outfits on TV, but she also represented the belief that femininity can be combined with power, strength, and a bold personality. While on the TV screen, her whole outfit seemed very put together and fitting to her figure. Behind the scenes, it kept falling off her body. What was the cause of the consistent wardrobe fail and what was done to solve it? Join us as we reveal everything about Linda Carter's outfit as Wonder Woman and how the series was the first of its kind. The Rise of Wonder Woman on National TV Linda Carter's role as Wonder Woman in the 1970s is very well known. She made Wonder Woman a part to be powerful and strong, which is an impression people still have till today. Her role as the Amazonian princess left a big mark on TV history, but behind the scenes, things weren't always easy. Even though audiences loved watching her do heroic things and wear amazing costumes, there were some problems with her outfit that most people didn't know about. Join us as we explore the not so well-known stories about Wonder Woman's costume troubles. In the middle of the 1970s, a new leading lady was getting ready to make her first appearance on the small screen. This was a time when superheroes mostly stayed in comic books and animated shows. The idea of bringing them to life in a real TV show was both thrilling and full of unknowns. Stepping into this new territory was ABC Network with its big project, a TV series all about one of DC Comics' most famous characters, Wonder Woman. Deciding to make a live-action version of Wonder Woman wasn't easy. Some people doubted it would work. Adapting such a beloved and well-known character into a TV show came with lots of challenges. People worried about how the amazing and mythical parts of the comic books would look when turned into a believable live-action show. Stay with us, because we're just, just getting started. The big expenses for making the show were one reason. Recreating Wonder Woman's amazing world with her Amazon beginnings and World War II backdrop was a huge challenge. It needed careful planning for the sets, detailed costumes, and fancy effects that were really advanced for that time. Even with all these difficulties, ABC decided to take a chance. In November of 1975, Wonder Woman first aired. Linda Carter, who wasn't widely known at the time, got the main part. Her stunning looks, paired with her ability to show the character's strength and kindness, quickly won over viewers. But behind the scenes, the high costs of making the show were causing worry for the network. By the end of the first season, despite its popularity, the network wasn't sure about doing another one. Keeping up the show's quality while also managing the budget was proving to be a tough balancing act. It looked like the series might end early, but fate had other plans. Wonder Woman got a new chance on CBS. CBS saw the show's potential and decided to take it on, even though ABC had hesitated. This was a big change that not only brought new energy to the character, but also marked a turning point for the show's development. CBS had to make some changes to deal with the high costs of production. They made smart choices. The biggest change was moving the story from World War II to modern times. This saved money on sets and props and made the stories more relevant to the world we live in. When the story moved from the past to the present, Wonder Woman's character also went through some small changes. Her outfit got adjusted to match the new period. The emblem of a golden eagle, which was a big part of her original costume, was changed because it seemed too much like symbols from wartime. Instead, it was replaced with a simpler gold design. This change in her costume, though not big, showed how the show was moving in a different direction under CBS. Now, let's talk about the history of the bikini. At first, it was meant to celebrate freedom and empower women. After World War II, it was seen as a way to break from tradition and embrace modernity. The bikini was invented by a Parisian engineer named Louis Rayard. He believed that this tiny piece of fabric would free women and capture the spirit of the post-war era. 
The name Bikini was chosen to highlight its explosive impact on fashion, borrowing from the Bikini Atoll where the U.S. tested nuclear weapons. He never imagined that the bikini would do more than just change beach fashion. It also played a special part in Wonder Woman's story when she first appeared on TV. Her iconic outfit, a mix of patriotic symbols and Amazonian themes, was central to her character, showing both strength and elegance. But during the series, a two-piece bikini became part of her costume, especially in episodes about her origins and her Amazonian connections. It was meant to echo the freedom and power the creators envisioned, resembling ancient gladiator attire to highlight her agility and strength. But what seemed perfect in theory didn't always work smoothly on screen. The idea of a strong, agile Wonder Woman in a bikini made sense thematically, but filming action scenes with it gave unexpected and often funny problems. As it turned out, the bikini, though stunning, wasn't practical for the intense stunts and action sequences the show became known for. That's not all. There were moments when the straps of the bikini would suddenly break during filming, or the outfit would shift in unexpected ways that the designers hadn't predicted. Linda Carter, always the pro, would find herself briefly struggling with her costume to prevent any accidental exposure. This would often result in laughter erupting on set, leading to the scene being cut as everyone rushed to fix the wardrobe issue before the next take. The bikini also brought new challenges in terms of consistency because of its flexible nature. It could look different in various shots of the same scene, causing headaches during editing. Ensuring the costume remained the same from scene to scene became a difficult task of careful observation and quick adjustments. Over time, these amusing wardrobe mishaps increased, providing the cast and crew with plenty of behind-the-scenes amusement, but they also needed a costume that not only looked good but also functioned well. It became clear that while the bikini represented empowerment, it might not be the most practical choice for a superhero who is always on the move. How the Wonder Woman superhero outfits evolved. From the moment she appeared in DC Comics and on TV screens, Wonder Woman's outfits have been as important as her lasso of truth or her Amazonian background. Linda Carter's portrayal of Wonder Woman and the changes in her outfit across three seasons of the show offers an interesting look into how the character has evolved and how fashion changed over time. In the first season, which took place during World War II, Wonder Woman wore an outfit that paid tribute to her comic book origins. The colors were vibrant, with red, blue, and gold being prominent. The bodice, a key part of her outfit, featured a striking gold eagle design. This eagle represented her patriotism and connection to Greek mythology, emphasizing her strength, freedom, and resilience during times of war. As the series moved into its second season set in the 1970s, Wonder Woman's costume underwent subtle changes to reflect the era's fashion trends and the character's evolution. While the basic colors of red, blue, and gold stayed the same, there were lots of changes in how they were put together, the materials used, and even the big gold eagle on her chest. In the beginning, the eagle was spread out and took up a lot of space on her costume, but later on, it got a bit sleeker. This might have been because fashion was changing in the 70s, with people liking smoother designs more. The new eagle still looked cool, but it was simpler, with fewer feathers. It still showed off Wonder Woman's style and how graceful and agile she was. As time went on, her costume changed again. The whole outfit kept up with the times, using better fabrics that were probably made with new technology. Even the belt, cuffs, and boots got updated with new designs and details. The eagle emblem on her chest got refined even more, still looking as cool as ever but fitting in better with the whole costume. It wasn't just slapped on, it felt like it was a natural part of her outfit. This change in her costume could show how Wonder Woman was becoming more connected with the world outside her Amazonian home. She was getting more involved in what was happening in the world of men, and her costume changed to reflect that. Linda Carter was more than just the costume she wore, there's more. Linda's enthusiasm for her role showed in how she approached every aspect of her character. She didn't settle for just acting, 
She wanted to truly embody Wonder Woman. This determination led her to do many of her own stunts, which was rare for lead actors, especially in the 1970s. It wasn't just about showing off her physical abilities. It was about ensuring the authenticity of her portrayal by fully immersing herself in the role. Linda's genuineness resonated with viewers, and one of the most memorable examples of her dedication was during a helicopter stunt. In this scene, Wonder Woman had to hang from the skid of a helicopter mid-flight. While most actors would have used a stunt double for such a risky task, Linda, fully committed to her role, chose to do it herself. As the helicopter rose with her dangling from it, a rush of adrenaline mixed with a clear sense of purpose engulfed her. She held on, giving the scene her all, and it became one of the most exciting moments of the series. The story of Wonder Woman on TV wasn't just about one famous costume. Throughout the series, many different outfits were used, each made for specific situations and themes. These outfits added depth and flexibility to Diana Prince's character. They weren't just nice to look at, they showed how Wonder Woman could adapt to different situations. One particular outfit that stood out was the full-body blue swimsuit. This costume wasn't for high-flying battles, it was for underwater scenes. Its sleek, shiny design lets Wonder Woman move gracefully underwater, like a true Amazonian princess. It wasn't just practical, it showed how she could adapt to different environments. Scenes with this costume showed Wonder Woman's ability to handle threats not just on land or in the air, but also deep under the sea. It gets more interesting. We can't not mention the Western-themed outfit, an impressive combination of the classic Wonder Woman costume with hints of the American Wild West. This attire pays homage to the time of cowboys and outlaws, placing Wonder Woman in a setting far from the cityscape viewers are used to. With tall boots, fringes, and subtle tweaks to her tiara and belt, this outfit shows Wonder Woman's knack for fitting into different eras and settings while still keeping her unique identity intact. Whenever she finds herself in saloons, among horses, and on dusty terrains, this is her go-to look. There's also the motorcycle version of her costume, another marvel aimed at connecting with the subculture of bikers. It's tough yet fashionable incorporating leather and protective gear, allowing Wonder Woman to ride freely with the wind, facing foes at high speeds, safety trends and criticisms. The special outfits made sure Wonder Woman stayed safe and stylish while riding her bike, proving she's always ready for action. Then there was the surprising and charming skateboarding outfit, blending 70s skate culture with Wonder Woman's heroism. It showed how the show stayed up to date with trends, with knee-high socks, sneakers, and slight changes to her usual costume. This outfit was more about agility and balance than fighting, highlighting another side of Wonder Woman's abilities. Each of these outfits was made for specific story needs, whether it was blending into a unique setting like the Wild West, or navigating different terrains like the ocean or city streets. They showed Wonder Woman's flexibility not just in action, but also in her style. These costumes weren't just for looks. They played a big part in telling the story visually, keeping Wonder Woman fresh and relevant beyond her classic red, blue, and gold attire. The series became a popular favorite, and here's another reason why. The producers of the show added different versions of the character to give viewers a variety to see. This also showed that just like the character herself, Women are capable of many things and can handle any situation. The special items she uses, like the bracelets and lasso, are super important in the comic book world. They aren't just things she carries around. They're like a part of who she is and what she stands for. These items have been around for a long time, starting in the comics and showing up in different ways in movies and TV shows, like the one with Linda Carter. The bracelets, sometimes called the bracelets of submission, have a story that goes back to Greek mythology. They were made from parts of a shield used by Zeus, the king of the gods. In the comics, they showed how the Amazon women were controlled by men, but then fought back against that control. When Wonder Woman and her Amazon friends wear these bracelets, they're showing their strength and their determination to stay free. 
These bracelets are super strong and can block things like bullets or even energy blasts. This is one of the most famous images of Wonder Woman when she crosses her wrists to protect herself. It shows both her ability to defend herself and her unwillingness to back down from a fight. In the comics, they dug deep into where these things came from and what they meant in ancient stories. But when they put it on TV, they mainly focused on how these things helped Wonder Woman right then and there. They didn't get into the history or what they meant like they did in the comics. Linda Carter, who played Wonder Woman, had a special connection with her costume. It wasn't just about dressing up. It was like she became a woman of strength and hope when she put it on. As time went on, Linda's feelings about the costume changed along with the world around her. At first, she was all in, knowing how important her role was to fans. The costume was made to look like the one in the comics but with a modern twist for the people watching in the 70s. It became a combination of power and femininity. Linda often felt proud and responsible when putting on her Wonder Woman outfit. She understood how important it was to represent a strong female character, especially in a world where male superheroes dominated. But Linda was not afraid to voice her opinions, especially when Deborah Winger was cast as Wonder Girl, a younger Amazonian hero. Winger's costume resembled Linda's, but with slight differences tailored to a younger character. Linda, protective of the legacy they were creating, had concerns about maintaining the dignity and whole point of the characters while introducing new actresses of the role in newer eras. She believed that every aspect, including the costume, should honor and celebrate the character's essence rather than being solely for looks. Balancing femininity, purpose, and empowerment was key for Linda, and she hoped to see this reflected in all future versions of Amazonian outfits. Linda's bond with the Wonder Woman costume ran deep. It wasn't just clothing. It was a piece of history representing her journey and the lives she had influenced. Among the various versions she wore, one stood out, the original costume from the first season featuring the iconic Golden Eagle emblem. This version she felt perfectly blended authenticity with modernity. We're not done just yet. Impressively, Linda was able to hold on to one of the original costumes she wore during her time on the show. This was quite rare because usually such pieces end up in museums or private collections. Keeping this costume wasn't just about feeling nostalgic. It was a real connection to a time in her life that changed her a lot. She often talked about how, even after many years, the costume still had a strong effect on her. It reminded her of when she was a young woman taking on a big role and becoming an icon, but of course not everyone liked this new way of thinking about women, but it had its supporters too. Roy Rogers, a famous guest star on the show and a legend in his own right, shared his thoughts on the changing representation of culture. Known for his cowboy persona, Rogers hailed from a time when portrayals of women in the media were quite different. When he first met Linda's Wonder Woman, it was like old Hollywood meeting the new wave of progressive ideas. Rogers, with his polite manner, expressed his admiration for Linda's role, praising the strength and dignity she brought to the character. He saw her outfit as a symbol of the changing times, even though he came from a more traditional era. While some people celebrated the role of a strong female superhero, others criticized the costume as being too revealing arguing that it catered more to male fantasies than to genuine female empowerment. This disagreement caused a popular debate of the time. How could femininity be shown as powerful without being objectified? Fans of the comics, on the other hand, appreciated the effort to stay true to the original design of Wonder Woman's outfit. They saw it as an authentic representation of the Amazonian warrior, bringing a beloved character to life on screen. Details like the Gold Eagle emblem and the Star Spangled design resonated deeply with die-hard fans, bridging the gap between the world of comic panels and the vibrant hues of television screens. As the show progressed and introduced various costumes, each outfit served a narrative purpose. Whether it was the full-body blue swimsuit or the Western-themed attire, these wardrobe changes told stories of Wonder Woman's adaptability and versatility while she stayed true to her main purpose. 
Did you ever watch the first Wonder Woman series? What do you think about it? Was it one of your top superhero shows when it aired? Share with us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share it with your family and friends, and subscribe to our channel.